Maccabim Revi'i, four Maccabees, four. For a certain man named Shimon, who was in opposition to Onyahu, who once held the high priesthood for life, and was an honorable and good man, after that by slandering him in every way, he could not injure him with the people, went away as an exile, with the intention of betraying his country. Whence coming to Apollonius, the military governor of Aram, and Phoenicia, and Cilicia, he said, Having good will to the king's affairs, I am come to inform you that infinite private wealth is laid up in the treasuries of Yerushalayim, which do not belong to the temple, but pertain to King Celestius. Apollonius, acquainting himself with the particulars of this, praised Shimon for his care of the king's interests, and, going up to Celestius, informed him of the treasure and getting authority about it, and quickly advancing into our country with the accursed Shimon and a very heavy force. He said that he came with the commands of the king, that he should take the private money of the treasure. And the nation, indignant at this proclamation, and replying to the effect that it was extremely unfair that those who had committed deposits to the sacred treasury should be deprived of them, resisted as well as they could. But Apollonius went away with threats into the temple, and the priests, with the women and children, having supplicated Elohim to throw his shield over the holy, despised place, and Apollonius going up with his armed forces to the seizure of the treasure, there appeared from heaven angels riding on horseback, all radiant in armor, filling them with much fear and trembling. And Apollonius fell half dead upon the court, which is open to all nations, and extended his hands to heaven, and implored, rather, and implored the Evrim with tears to pray for him and propitiate the heavenly host, for he said that he had sinned, so as to be consequently worthy of death, and that if he were saved, he would celebrate to all men the blessedness of the holy place. Onyahu the high priest, induced by these words, although for other reasons anxious that the king, rather that king Seleucius, should not suppose that Apollonius was slain by the device of men, and not by divine punishment, prayed for him. And he being thus unexpectedly saved, departed to manifest to the king what had happened to him. But on the death of Celestius, the king, his son Antiochus Epiphanes, succeeds to the kingdom, a man of haughty pride and terrible who having deposed Onyahu from the high priesthood, appointed his brother Yechon to be high priest, who had cut a covenant, if he would give him this authority, to pay yearly three thousand six hundred and threescore talents. And he committed to him the high priesthood and rulership over the nation. And he both changed the manner of living of the people and perverted their civil customs into all iniquity. So that he not only erected a gymnasium, rather gymnasium on the very citadel of our country, but neglected the guardianship of the temple, at which divine vengeance being grieved, instigated Antiochus, rather, Antiochus himself against them, for being at war with Ptolemy in Mitzrayim, he heard that on a report of his death being spread abroad, the inhabitants of Yerushalayim had exceedingly rejoiced, and he quickly marched against them, and having subdued them, 
he established a decree that if any of them live according to the Torah of his country, he should die. And when he could not by no means destroy his decree, rather, by no means destroy by his decrees the obedience to the Torah of the nation, but saw all his threats and punishments without effect. For even women, because they continued to circumcise their children, were flung down a precipice along with them, knowing beforehand of the punishment. Whence, rather, when, therefore, his decrees were disregarded by the people, he himself compelled by means of tortures every one of this race, by tasting forbidden meats, to abjure the Yahudic belief.